Welcome back. So with a long line of projects to do, one of them is that we need to mount the main GPS antenna. And so this is going to live uh, right underneath the nose hatch. And in order for that to work, uh, we actually have to cut a hole out of the carbon fiber in the nose hatch and replace it with uh, fiberglass so the signal can uh, penetrate through there. So the hole's been cut out as you can see. And um, there's Keith getting ready to lay down um, a layer of fiberglass there. And then we'll be ma making a mounting bracket uh, behind that. And you'll see that shortly. And meanwhile, this is that quick mold we created for the uh, aileron trim tab, the lower surface of that. So that part has um, been laid up now. And here's that nose hatch um, back in its mold and back under vacuum in order to um, cure that little uh, fiberglass patch over it there for the GPS antenna. So that didn't take too long to get that one sorted out. And so we'll have a good signal coming through there now. And I had Jim cut these little brackets for part of the linkages for the door handles that actuate the locks and they just needed to have a slot um, or an opening cut in the back of them so I was just using the machine to do that. And there you can see it's about halfway through and you'll see these um, brackets in use probably on Saturday's episode because we're getting close to finishing off all the linkages for the locks for the doors which is super exciting. And technically it is a wing surface and this is the first of the upper uh, skins for the canard and Jeff's in the process of laying it up there so you'll see the core underneath the carbon fiber there. So this is the first one down of the actual flying surface and that's what it looks like when it's under the bag. So that's the first one down obviously there's upper lower and left and right on um, those for the foreplane and then we'll be on to uh, the main wings. And after Keith and Zach uh, bonded in those little compression sleeves for the seatbelt mounts in that rear bulkhead um, last week, Keith went and did a nice layup over those and actually did a super nice job there. Very neat work that he did there. So they're, they're all finished now. And he also been spending some time uh, sanding around where the, um, the radiuses are there. As you can see, sort of more moving the camera around, he's been prepping that whole area because that's going to get radius blocking put in there. And you'll see that later on just to... Um, strengthen up the whole thing for the pressurization. So he's done that on the uh, rear of the cabin wall and also up in the front you see he's worked all the way around there and so that's going to get like a, a drag radius of uh, resin and probably micro mix in there and then a layup over that just around those corners off. And this is what that uh, patch there on the nose hatch looks like when it's all uh, completed and when you lift up the uh, the hatch there and look underneath you can kind of see what it looks like obviously it's a little translucent right now but that will ultimately be painted and we'll be able to have uh, a nice GPS signal coming through there and here's that first surface for the canard uh, out of the mold and uh, ready to be trimmed up so Zach's getting ready to do that and right now it just needs a, a rough trim around the edges there and then we'll get a finished trim back to the edge of all the flanges and you know the cut lines and stuff are in there but it, that one came out super nice no bubbles or anything like that in it so it's um that's pretty exciting and here's jeff doing a rough trim on that lower surface for the aileron trim tab um coming out you know that came out of that uh, little quick mold that we created so nothing fancy with that and the reason why we had that is because there's a sort of radius in the bottom or the end of it that you can kind of see there and back on the GPS antenna, Keith created a temporary uh, backing plate out of carbon fiber. Now that will be replaced with aluminum when it arrives. And there's four little hard points that hold uh, that down or hold that to the skin on, on each corner. And so he's bonded those into place um, just with some five minute um, epoxy. And now he's uh, actually bonding them in with a bit of uh, resin and micro mix and doing a layup over the top of them. Um, so when it's all done, uh, we just take that metal plate that's coming, the aluminum plate, we uh, bolt the GPS to that and then we bolt that metal plate uh, to these mounting points here and the GPS antenna is all done. Okay, so onto the door handles, I needed to drill some uh, sort of uh, locking holes into these rods that run through the door handles. So I started out uh, just using a really tiny uh, bit there because uh, I didn't want it to sort of walk over that the uh, rod there and then I stepped it up to the next larger size and then ultimately um, stepped it up to the final size to go through so it's actually handy having the machine to do this because you can just take it and uh, the drill bit down really slowly and uh, let it sort of uh, cut its hole without you know 
um, putting too much pressure on it, which would normally force it to walk. And uh, you know, you could probably put a um, use a center punch there to put a starting point on it, but it's actually kind of nice just to be able to bring it down. So here I am uh, now on the third bit there, stepping it up to the size that it needs to be for the finished pin that goes through that locks this um, locks this actuator into the door handle and you'll see it all here in a second when it's all done but I uh, didn't have any problems and I've still got to put a couple more uh, locking holes through this same rod later on just for some cotter pins that will hold um, the, the end washers and bushings in place but that's basically what they look like they've been slid through now and then the locking um, bolts there have been uh, put through as well and those are threaded at the very end so it locks those into place and those are how the door locks will get actuated and Zach's done the rough cut on that uh, uh, canard skin and he's now just doing the finish sanding along the flange edges there. And Jeff's getting underway now with uh, doing the second one. So this is the one for the right hand upper side. And just got the first layer of uh, carbon fiber in there right now. And it's a little bit further along. Got some core in there where that lives and just getting uh, putting in the second or the backing layers there and uh, ultimately you know he'll have it all bagged in no time so um, that's two down of the flying surfaces um, out of the I guess total in eight and here you can see he's got the um, breather fabric there um, in place or the actual perfilm I guess is what that is and then the breather fabric is the white um, sort of fluffy one that we have and I did a quick run up to Brits this afternoon to have him just quickly weld up these two little um, brackets that we needed for uh, all these little bell cranks that we needed for the door uh, mechanism. Because I had them, but they weren't really cutting it for what I needed. So that's what they look like there, and they've already got the rods connected to them. So he welded that little tube on there that the uh, little bronze bushing lives in. There's one on the uh, upper side and one on the bottom side, and then there's going to be a hard point that we're going to um, mount there onto the door frame. And so the one main actuator from the center um, quadrant there is going to actuate these uh, the three locks on this side of the door. And obviously it's a bit complicated, and that's why we're not going to be doing it this way for production. Um, but we, you know, we still have to persevere and get this done. And Jim and Jeremy have just been putting in a great effort to get all this um, sorted out and make sure that it's all operating smoothly and all the linkages are connected and working correctly. And we're just about there, we've just got to put the door handles in and connect those up and then put the uh, skins on and the windows in and and uh, the doors will be almost complete. So here's that one that Jeff was working on, the upper uh, four plane one. And so that one's now bagged and finished. So that's two of the um, flying surfaces done now and uh, with six more to go. So getting through them. And this is the one that Zach and it was trimming off and it's back in the mold they just sitting there but it uh, came out nicely so that one's all ready to go and uh, we've still got to do ribs and stuff for the four plane but um, it won't take too long to do that and lastly here's that uh, little trim tab there's the bottom surface that uh, Jeff was trimming in so you can see he's mated it to the top surface there and just a little flange in between it and it just looks like a mini aileron but that's kind of what it is a trim tab for the aileron itself um, so that one's all done and um, he's just going to hinge that one and he's, we've already got the little trim motor for that, a Ray Allen trim motor. And finally no real news on the engine yet, still sort of pondering things um, but it definitely burnt the fuel that it burnt and uh, I'm pretty sure the prop is just maybe too set to too flat of a pitch right now. Uh, we'll find out more later. Anyway that's our update for this uh, first half of this week and thanks again for watching and uh, tune in again on Saturday.